Hello again, fellow audiophiles. I am Wave Theory, and today we are going to take a look at the Erzatich Perfidus headphone amplifier. This lists for 999 euros on Erzatich's website, to which I will link to down below. And that, at the current exchange rate as of the filming of this video, that translates to about 1,070 US dollars, right in that range. This was sent to me by Erzatich Audio for review. The plan is to send it back here in the very near future since I'm just about done with it. And uh, that will be disappointing. I will be sorry to see this one go. And we'll unpack that here in a little bit. But Erzatich has made no attempt to influence my opinion on this piece one way or the other. So all of the thoughts that you are about to hear are mine and mine alone. So let's go ahead and do shameless self-promotion and then we will dump it. <laughs> There's a good outtake for you. We will jump into the review. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Please remember to hit that like button, and if you haven't, please subscribe. Also, I have a Patreon set up so that you can help support me on a monthly basis, and I've set up a PayPal donation so that you can help me out in that way too if a monthly dis a subscription does not make sense for you. Links for all of that, including the benefits, in the description below. Please check those out. All right. On with the show. All right, so Erzatich, who are they? They are a Slovenian uh, audio company that currently makes uh, headphones, and I just reviewed recently their Mania headphones, so I will put a link to the description uh, to this review down below. A link to that review in the description. Doing great with the words today. Okay, uh, so they make headphones. They make headphone amplifiers and they make some accessories like cables and that sort of thing. So, um, so far, I mean, I'll just say I, I liked their Mania headphone here. It is a little bit different. It takes a little bit of brain adjusting to get used to, but once you do, you get a, a smooth, rich, a little bit leaning dark, but uh, very non-fatiguing and surprisingly resolving sound out of these and all that. And they made some design choices in here that are a little unorthodox, but work. And that theme kind of carries over into this amplifier design too. Okay, so we'll we'll get into that through the review here too. So um, yeah, uh, my first two, or my introduction to Erzatich here has been quite positive. So I, uh, I expect to see more good things out of them in the future and I will be watching their uh, company development with great interest. All right, so. Onto the Perfidus then, um, it is specced as a Class A headphone amplifier, and you can kind of see Blaz Erzatich's um, sense of humor come out here a little bit, because for one, around the volume knob here, you kind of see this devil horns thing going on here, and then also he says that it's a evil Class A, or it's a Class A evil headphone amplifier, okay, which... That and then the, the name Perfidus in uh, the word Perfidus in Latin means um, one who breaks their promise a lot, someone who is faithless, deceitful, okay, that sort of thing. Which in this day and age of like perfectly measuring amplifiers and that sort of thing is just to me another way that uh, Erzatich is just daring to be a little bit different and to stand out a little bit. And again, to, to these ears, it by and large has worked. All right, so um, let's then jump into this in more detail, starting with the build. What we see is we have this very um, small area faceplate here, but a fair amount of depth to the design here. So it's a small footprint Okay, at least in terms of like when it's facing you, it has a small footprint and all of that, but it is a little bit deeper in its design. On the back, we have an RCA single-ended input. We have a power switch, and then we have a, a port for the power cord. Okay, on the front, we get this volume knob. We get a 6.35 millimeter single-ended headphone output, and we have this small LED right here that glows a nice soft red. It's not overly bright or overpowering when it's on, just to indicate when it's on. So there you go. That's the build. Okay. Um, the specs on this thing that Erzatich's website currently shares, um, like they spec its total harmonic distortion rating at something like 0.007%, something really small that you don't need to worry about. Um, they claim it's very powerful, but they don't give output power spec 
on it. But I will say that by ear, there is a fair amount of output power here because it really did not struggle with some difficult loads like my 600 ohm Bayer DT880 or the Hi Feynman HE6 SEV2. Like it handled both of those just fine. So plenty of power for any realistic headphone pairing you're going to put on this thing. All right. So um, as far as the build goes and all that, I mean, other than the, the basic design of it, it's got, you know, it's not super heavy, but it's not super light either. The power switch on the back thing is, is what it is. Um, it doesn't get super hot um, to my uh, touch on it anyway. And so really just leaving it powered on is um, not a bad idea and it's not really going to damage or hurt anything. So the fact that the power switch is on the back isn't a huge deal uh, in this particular case. Um, that will annoy some people though. Some people are just philosophically against that. I am okay with it in some designs like this one where power switches on the back bother me is like on the, the shit liar plus when you're just going to kill the tube faster if uh, you don't turn the unit off. So that's situations like that are where that bothers me. This one is fine with me. Now, I should comment on the fact that it is a single-ended design. And um, this has been a common and standard complaint from me lately on amplifiers in this price range that lack a balanced input. And I'm going to, again, just be very slow and intentional about, about explaining this opinion because I said this about the Shit Liar Plus 2 and some people got a little bit upset with me and I'm not sure if that's because they don't understand or they just didn't like the fact that I was saying it. Okay, um, but I, it needs to be said here too. The vast majority of DACs out there right now that are in a price range that would be of Let's call it proper match to a headphone amp that is right around $1,000 like this one is. Okay, The vast majority of them out there are balanced in their design. They have balanced outputs. And what's more, they sound better from their balanced outputs than they do their single-ended outputs much more often than not. About the only, say, sub $1,000 uh, DAC that I can think of that has a fairly tiny drop-off between its balanced output and its single output performance would be the Shit Bifrost 2 or the 2 slash 6 4. Both of them do a really good job of having still a high quality signal output from their single-ended as um, compared to their balanced outputs. Those stand out as an exception, though because pretty much everything from topping that is balanced or SML that is, SMSL is balanced, okay? Uh, musician slash Denifrips, okay? Which I have the Draco in right now and can verify this. Um, let's see, who else is, is in there doing all of this? But the point is like when you round this up, like even, even shit like with their Yggdrasil up at $2,400 or whatever, at least the old Yiggy A2, all of that like is known to be significantly better from the balanced output than from the single-ended output. This is not because balanced is inherently better. It's not. There is nothing wrong with an entirely single-ended signal chain from an audio quality standpoint. The problem comes in is that when a device is balanced, truly balanced, it is designed and built around being balanced so it performs better from balanced than single ended in like 99% of cases. Okay. And single ended is usually included as just almost an afterthought for convenience. And it's not designed to sound the best from single ended. So the fact that this amp has only single ended inputs on it is going to limit the options that you have for DAC pairings. And that's why I'm bringing this up. Okay, so you do need to put some thought into what DAC you are going to match with this uh, because it is a pretty high quality headphone amp and I'm going to praise its sound here in a moment, but you do need to keep in mind that system building, signal chain building is going to require a little bit more care and a little bit more thought because of the reality of the DAC market around this price point right now. 
Now, some manufacturers, not Urzatich, so I'm not pointing the finger at them on this one, okay? But some manufacturers have told me things like, well, balanced and single-ended shouldn't have any difference. I agree with that statement. They shouldn't have any difference. As a reviewer, I cannot look at the market as the way it should be, though. I have to look at it the way it is. And the way it is, is what I just said. The vast majority of DACs around this price point are made balanced, sound better from their balanced outputs than their single ended, okay? So lacking a balanced input here, again, puts more of a load on you, the consumer, to build a signal chain properly. Okay, I'm sorry that that took such a long explanation, but again, I feel like that point is very much misunderstood when I bring it up. Okay, so, just generally to amp makers then, please put balanced inputs on your, your uh, amps at least. Doesn't matter if it's a single-ended amp, it really doesn't, but what does matter is that we need a balanced input just to make system building and DAC pairing and all of that more friendly. I think you leave sales on the table or on the floor or all that by only having a single-ended input. If real estate, having the room for it is an issue, put a 4.4 millimeter Pentacon input on it, okay? Um, but yeah, please include those. Okay, moving on. I think we really can jump right into the sound because yes, it's well made. We just covered the single ended only part of it, uh, potentially being an issue and all of that. And But yeah, other than that, it's well made. It's got this humorous aesthetic and motif to it and, uh, and so forth. So let's get on with the show. Test gear. I plugged this into the single-ended outputs of my Berkeley Alpha Series 2 DAC, the Musician Draco, and the SMSL VMV D1SE, and then here towards the end of my testing, uh, by the way, the Musician Draco and that VMV D1SE are both in for review, and then here near the end of my testing, the Shit Modi Multibit 2 showed up, which is a single-ended only DAC, and uh, I got a brief listen um, with that through here as well. Headphones I tried. This Bayer Dynamic DT880 600 ohm, my Fostex TH900 with Lawton Purple Heart Chambers on it, an original Focal Utopia, a High Feynman HE6 SEV2, a High Feynman HE1000 SE, and then Urzacic's own Mania headphone. Okay. So then into the sound. As I mentioned uh, early uh, ago, like if, if you're worried about power and there's no output spec on, on Urzatich's website, and if they tell me what the output spec is, I will make sure to pin it in a comment uh, below the video right, if they do share that information. But as far as power goes, for any realistic headphone pairing, there's enough. It handled DT880, the 600 ohm variant, really well. And likewise with the uh, HE6 SEV2, which is a planar that is notoriously power hungry. I had to turn the potentiometer up to about three o'clock or so, but it still was controlled and punchy and, and holographic and it sounded like it sounded really good. So this is a fine amp to match with an HE6 SEV2 as these ears tell me as well. So the amount of power output and the amount of control for hard to drive loads is fine. Okay, that's, uh, that's pretty good. All right, so then let's get on to the sound signature and all of that. I'm about 100% positive that if you were to do a frequency response measurement on this thing, that you would find it flat from 20 hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. Okay, and that's the case for pretty much any amp, be it solid state or tube these days, they all do that. The presentation here though, is not necessarily flat in the traditional sense. And this is another way in which Urzatich just dares to be a little bit different and to my ear, it ends up working. Because the presentation here leans a little bit more like dark and rich again, much like the Mania headphone does. Okay, uh, so it's again a little bit dark, a little bit rich, not quite as much air up top, okay, uh, sizzle, like, you know, brightness, that kind of thing. Now. The trade-off with that is that this has some of the best treble control I've heard of an amplifier anywhere near this price. Like I was just continually amazed 
by this thing's ability to take really bright headphones that tend towards sharpness and harshness and fatigue in the treble region and rein it in and get it under control and turn them into much smoother, more listenable and less fatiguing uh, listens really from there. So I think that is a truth strength going on here. So the overall presentation from a perceived frequency response st standpoint is a little bit dark, a little bit rich, okay? But just amazing treble control to go along with that, even though the treble is not necessarily emphasized. All right, the sound staging has decent size to it. It's not expansive or enormous, but it's also far from tiny. There is a little bit of a perception of layering going on to it as well. The resolution, again, because of that kind of rich presentation to it, the resolution is not in your face or pushed forward at all. In fact, when you first listen to it, at least when I would first listen to it, like switch from say my Lake People G111 Mark II to this one in a comparison, this would come across initially as just like a little bit veiled. But then as I listened, I realized that everything the G111 Mark II was telling me was also in here, okay, was being resolved by this and more. So this is a slightly more resolving amp than that G111 Mark II as well. It just does not push it at you because of that slightly richer presentation. And so there's just like a mellow smoothness and listenability to the, the presentation that comes, I think, from the results of being excellent. And I mean excellent in treble control. And then also just be having that little bit richer presentation. You just get a, a smoother and then a little bit more relaxed in the detail presentation. Still very detailed and resolving, well textured, all of that, just not forward about it. So you get a smooth, relaxed, kind of easy to listen to kind of presentation to it, but still with the detail, still with a nicely holographic soundstage and, and all of that um, that comes with it. But again, it takes the brain just a little bit to adjust to that slightly, slightly darker, richer, more laid back sound, particularly if you are coming from, you know, one of those measurement chasing amps that has just like so much clarity and cleanliness to it and just kind of pushes everything forward, but also just kind of has that sort of like almost harshy digitally kind of sound. Okay. This is going to sound a little bit muffled and veiled at first, but trust me, it's all there. Okay, there's very good resolution here. Just give it a chance. It will come out. All right. So that's kind of like the sound of this thing in a nutshell on its own. I think it is worth talking about um, headphone pairings in particular with this thing because that to me is where the real excitement comes in here. That the, the treble control opens up a lot of doors, in my opinion, for headphones that are amp picky, particularly up top, and uh, become fatiguing and difficult to you know, find amps for uh, because of it. Like, for example, Urzatich's own Mania here is a good match for this amp, and that should surprise no one because they were made you know, in the same house they do match each other really well. I mentioned how this headphone has just a little bit of a treble peak on, um, on some other source gear. This reigns that in really well. And so, yes, this is a nice pairing together. Urza Titch's website recommends that you, patch, you match this to darker sounding headphones. And I think that's because this one is a darker sounding headphone and these two go very well together. But I'm going to tell you in my testing, you are in no way limited to darker sounding headphones. And in fact, I think where it's real strength lies is, as I've said, taking brighter, sharper sounding headphones and getting them under control and making them a much more smooth, listenable and less fatiguing listen. OK, so like, for example, Fostex owners, particularly particularly those who have Fostex Biodyna drivers, TH600 series, TH900 series, etc. I think you should be really excited about this one. I broke out my own Fostex TH900 with the Lawton Purple Heart chambers on it here. 
These headphones, if they've got that, um, you know, those 1.5 Tesla biodynamic Fostex drivers in them, which are amazing drivers from a frequency extension standpoint. They are super fast, super resolving, detailed, all of that kind of thing. But boy, that trouble can be hard to control. Okay? And it can be very sharp, very piercing on the wrong source gear. These are extremely head, um, head amp picky. They have sounded the best to my ear on the, uh, the head amp GSX Mini and the SPL Phonitor X. My own personal amps, I have yet to match the performance with, for these headphones with those two um, until this came along. This be, has been right up there with the GSX Mini, with the Phonitor X for that headphone, for this headphone. The pairing here was amazing. The really sharp, bright treble that was in here got, was controlled a lot more. The mid-range tonal balance evened out a little bit so they didn't sound as forward in like the 3K region, which can bring some hollowness to the sound on those and some nasaliness to the sound on those at all at some times. And it just, even though it still maintained its V-shaped signature with elevated sub bass and elevated treble presence, the treble took on a much smoother, more natural sound to it, avoided a lot of the sharp S's and T's and a lot of the sharp simmer, shimmer of aggressive uh, cymbal hits and all of that and just became a much more enjoyable, well-rounded, it's great, okay? Like I could go on and on and on about how well this um, paired with my TH900 here, which is a rarity, so that really stood out to me as something like, so Fostex Biodyna um, headphone users, if you're looking for an amp to just kind of mellow out that treble a little bit, check this one out. I was amazed at that pairing. But that ability to bring the treble under control just carried through. My 600 ohm Bayer DT880. The DT880 is a wonderful headphone, um, but it has the, you know, that those buyer highs that you hear about where they can get sharp and sibilant and all of that, and they're a little bit hard to control up top. This one does a great job, okay? It's still a bright, you know, the DT880 is still a neutral bright headphone on this amp, but that treble smooths out. Some of the peakiness goes away. The sharp S's and T's are not never, but they become rare on here, and the overall treble timbre just sounds, starts to sound really good. And then to go with it, you still get that warmth of this amp, like that kind of that thickness, richness, a little bit darker thing going on. So you get some punchy bass and all of that going on with the DT880 as well. Okay, there. And then like if you're familiar with the Utopia, right? Like it can be a little bit hot and sharp. This smooths it out. hi fi Men's House Sound has some elevated treble at times and, and can fatigue some people and come across as sharp and, um, and sibilant to some. And in every case that I plugged one of those in here, the HE1000SE, the HE6SE V2, the treble just became very smooth and natural sounding and non-fatiguing. It's just really, really a standout feature of this amp that it can get that treble under control. But then it still has that sort of darker presentation with some good bass extension, good bass control, good bass resolution and texturing, good mid-range timbre and tonal balance and some good resolution, all that. It's not overly dynamic in its sound, so it's not going to punch and slam all that. Well, I mean, except for these. These still hit really hard, okay? But it's not going to add a lot of the of physicality in that, but it's far from poor in that way either. You still get a fair amount of dynamic impact and all of that. So, um, yeah, now comparisons, because I like to do comparisons with other products on this channel. The one that I went back and forth with a lot was the Lake People G111 Mark II, because I don't have a whole lot of amps in here, at least solid state amps in right now that are right around this price. Um, but as I mentioned, it is a step up in resolution from the G111 Mark II, noticeably so. A little bit more texturing and a little bit more holographic sound stage, better positioning and separation and all of that of the instruments and all that in the sound field. Okay, um, It doesn't stage quite as large, but again, it's more holographic. The G111 Mark II 
is a little bit more lively and aggressive sounding. It pushes details and all of that forward. The Perfidus is much more relaxed and smooth, okay? Um, and all of that, but, so again, if, when you switch back and forth between those two, as I mentioned, the Perfidus is initially going, probably gonna sound to you a little bit veiled um, and like it's lacking detail. But as you listen, you realize again, everything is there and more than the G111 Mark II has to offer. It's more spatially accurate and coherent. It just takes a minute for that to like happen because it's not as forward or as aggressive okay, in its presentation, its detail presentation, it's you know, more treble control and all of that. So it's definitely in there. Okay, have I gone on and on enough? Probably. So yes. Urzatich really impressed me with this one. I liked their Mania headphone, but I really like this amp. Um, I wish it could stay, frankly, I really do, because, I mean, particularly for my Fostex, I could listen to this pairing a lot more happily, because um, I really enjoyed that, okay? Um, so, really nice job to Blaz Urzatich on, on designing this. The, uh, the only unfortunate thing, I think, is that it only has the single-ended input, and just in the reality of the DAC market today, uh, I think a lack of balanced uh, input is going to hurt the sales potential um, of this because it makes DAC pairing more difficult for you, the end user. But that's really about the only complaint that I have about it. That's about it. Okay. Um, I think there definitely is a place in the market for it because of what it does for treble control across a wide range of brands of headphones. I mean, I've had a Fostex, a Buyer, a couple Hi-Fi Mins, a Focal in here where just like the treble performance smoothed out and became less fatiguing across the board, which is impressive and important, I think, for treble sensitive listeners out there. All right, so I will leave it there. I am Wave Theory. This has been my review of the Urzatich Perfidus. Um, if anything I've said in this review has piqued your interest on it, please do check it out and support this. Uh, who I believe they are more a, a bit of an upstart company. I will be watching Urzatich going forward with great interest because they have impressed me with these early offerings. So uh, yeah, I am Wave Theory. Please check out my PayPal to make a one-time donation to help support the channel or my Patreon where you can join on a monthly basis, support the channel, and talk to me on Discord and things of that nature. And uh, yeah, otherwise, please like this video, subscribe if you haven't, leave a comment, and do all of those things that you do to support YouTube channels. So, thanks for watching, and as always, enjoy the music.